All right, this is uh, question number six from the 2014 Calc AB exam, and it is a slope field question. So let's take a look. Um, so in part A, you're actually given the slope field, and what you need to do, it's really a differential equation problem, actually, um, but you're given the slope field, and what you have to do is uh, sketch the solution curve through the point 0, 1. So um, dy dx is given... It's uh, 3 minus y times cosine of x, so I think you can anticipate having to solve that differential equation. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for where it's 0. So it's definitely 0 uh, at anywhere x is negative pi over 2 or pi over 2 because of the cosine of x being 0 there. Um, it's also 0 when y is equal to 3, but that turns out not to matter, I think, in this problem. Uh, so what I want to do is draw my solution and just make sure that along those uh, vertical lines I have uh, maximums or minimums. So there's the point, 0, 1. And what I do when I'm drawing a uh, particular solution is I imagine that this is some sort of flowing water and that I'm just dropping a twig into the water and I'm seeing where it goes. So uh, starting there and moving to the right, it's going to go up and uh, then it's going to start going back down. So just kind of follow the contours. Um, I, I don't know how they grade these because uh, I feel like you could sort of reasonably think several graphs look pretty right. I mean, they all have the same basic shape. But let's go in the negative direction, which I found to be considerably more difficult. Um, like this. So I did that for kind of half of it, and then I'm going to go back up. And it's just going to keep going up uh, until, I don't know, someplace far over to the left, I think. Uh, and then that would be my answer and I'd be totally done, but I want to point out that at those points uh, you should have kind of maximums and minimums, uh, and it should be differentiable at those points. It's not, it shouldn't be a sharp turn. Um, so that would be my answer to A. And uh, let's move on. So in part B, we're going to use the differential equation that we're given. Uh, we're going to use the initial condition 0, 1, and we are told that we have to write a tangent line. So uh, I'm going to plug 0, 1 into this derivative. And that's going to give me uh, 3 minus 1 times the cosine of 0, which is just 2 because the cosine of 0 is 1. And uh, so the tangent line is y minus 1 equals 2 times the quantity x minus 0. I always put the quantity x minus 0, even though you definitely don't need that part, um, just so all my tangent lines look the same. And now I have to approximate f of point 0.2, uh, which is, I don't, never understand why they ask these questions. So f of point 0.2 is approximately, just plug 0.2 into the tangent line, so 1.4. All right, and let's move on to uh, question C. So question C is uh, we have to separate and integrate. So it's find the particular solution that passes through 0, 1. So we're going to separate and integrate. So dy over 3 minus y equals cosine of x dx. Um, Usually on the scoring guideline, I don't know if you've ever looked at one of them, if you don't separate, you're not really eligible for any of the points on this part of the problem. So make sure you separate. Uh, what I like to do is multiply 3 by a negative here. So I just have y minus 3 in the denominator. I find that useful because uh, in the past I used to forget sometimes to multiply by the negative when I did the uh, absolute value type thing for the natural log. Um, so to avoid that, now I just multiply 3 by a negative. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to integrate both sides. The left side, I get the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 3. On the right side, I get negative sine of x uh, plus c. And I'm going to exponentiate before I solve for c to get rid of the natural log. So what happens is uh, I'm getting rid of the absolute value, and I'm bringing down the constant uh, at the same time so I can drop the absolute value. If I didn't bring down the constant at the same time, I wouldn't be allowed to drop the absolute value. Um, so that's an issue you should definitely be aware of. I recommend you do it the way that I'm doing it, obviously. Uh, so let's solve for c. So 1 minus 3 is equal to c e to the 0, which means that c is negative 2, which means that y is equal to 3 minus 2 e to the negative sine of x. Uh, and that would be my answer to this question. So I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.